Hey guys, it's your girl Pixie, and I'm back with another video. If you guys are new to this channel, welcome to Pixie's World. If you guys are not new, welcome back. Uh, before we get into this video, guys, please like, please comment, please subscribe, and please be sure to follow me on all of my other social platforms. All right, guys, today's video is going to be about the laws of human nature by Robert Greene. But before we get into the video, guys, I just want to thank my consistent and um, loyal subscribers. Um, I, I definitely woke up this morning not in a good mood and I turned on my YouTube videos and my camera and I'm happy and y'all are part of the reason why, um, guys, and I really want to thank y'all for that. Um, also, I want to say like my channel is for personal growth. My channel is to build confidence. My channel is for people to believe in yourself. My channel is not for gossip. My channel is not for drama. It's not for messiness. So I know my channel is going to grow a little slower than the next person because that's not what I'm talking about. So I do want to thank the loyal people who are on my page that want to improve they self. Um, messy selves better and quicker than positivity. So I definitely want to give a shout out to y'all that have been rocking with Pixie that want to grow because it's a very it's a it's a one percent of us who wants to grow so congratulations to the one percent i have to give y'all a hand clap i usually emoji my hand clap but i have to give y'all a real life hand clap if you're the one percent that's trying to grow you're already in a better position than more than way more than half the people that you're probably surrounded by and that y'all see on an everyday basis. So, congratulations to y'all that's on some positivity. My channel is for mainly girls, yes. But, guys, I have pieces in here for y'all, too. Everything is not just for the ladies. Um, You know, I am a stripper and I am a female. So, obviously, I'm going to talk about being a stripper and being a female. But, this is for the gentlemen, too. And, um... You know, I do talk about stripping and, you know, my talents, but it's for y'all to get into y'all talents. If y'all into videography or photography or whatever it is that y'all may do, I can't talk about that because that's not what I'm doing. But I'm, I'm here to support and back up whatever decision that you guys make. I want everybody to win in y'all lane. And if y'all been watching my videos, y'all always know I say create your own lane. Don't try to fit in. Don't do what nobody else is doing. Do what y'all doing. That's it. So I just want to thank you guys. And I actually want to give you guys, I want to acknowledge the few of you guys who come on here for just stuff that's just not drama. Even with my dancing, I try to put a positivity to on it because it's like dancing is bad. And it is ghetto, and it's a lot that go on inside the, the stripper culture. But if you keep your head down, you do what you're supposed to do. I don't want y'all to. I don't want y'all to think I have not gotten to no drama. I don't want y'all to think that nothing bad happened to me in a strip club or nothing like that. But if you're good and you do what you're supposed to do, God will find a way to get to 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 minimize. And you will find a way to minimize it. Like that's not the end all be all in the strip club. It's not the end all be all in life. Nothing in life is all 100% positive. It's good and bad and everything. So it's your choice whether you're going to choose good or you're going to choose bad. But just remember this. You can't get good and be bad. So that's just that. Thank you guys um, for the loyalty and the support. And um, we're going to get into this book. So the first thing I want to say before I talk about the book is, guys, get your library card. Um Go to your local library, get your library card, and it's free. Um, maybe a dollar to get a card or maybe a dollar to replace the card, I think. But go to the dollars go to the dollar store. Go to the library and get y'all a library card. Um it's take five minutes to sign up for it, maybe less. If y'all don't have a library card, my library card is old as shit. And, um, guys, like, I will say this. It's a lot of, I get on YouTube, I mean, Instagram, and I save, like, a lot of books. 
you know, for um, to read in the future. I'm not really on a challenge, but I just want to start reading a little bit more. But I want to say this, guys. Um, a lot of these books are new. So either it's on extreme hold or just the library don't have most of the books. So, guys, you're, you're going to end up buying some of your books. Every book is not going to be free. But most of them can be. Or you could just read the books that the library got. And you don't have to buy no books if that's, if that's not what you want to do. I did end up borrowing this book at the library. But I had like three books at one time. So I didn't get a chance to finish it. I think they let you hold the book for like three, four weeks. And then after that, like you got to either renew it or, you know, give it up. But if it's, if the book is like really on high demand, they'll let you check it out like two or three times, like a month, month and a half. And then they're going to ask for it back. So I would suggest you get one book at a time, depending on your schedule and depending on how busy you are. Because in the middle of the book, I had to give the book back and I wanted to keep reading it. So I went on Amazon to actually purchase the book. I'll um, leave the link below for the book. I think it was like $12, $13. So I ended up having to purchase the book anyway because um, I just had too many books. And I, I couldn't read them all at one time. My busy schedule, I'd be all over the place, y'all. So um, this, is the, this is my physical copy of the book. This is not from the library. I gave the library book up. This, I, I, I'm already done reading this book. Right now, I'm reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad, so I'll give y'all a review on that. I'm halfway through, or a little more than halfway through on this. So, give me a couple days. I'll give y'all a review on Rich Dad, Poor Dad. But, um, yes, um, The Laws of Human Nature is right here. Um, when I was a kid, I used to read all the hood books. If you guys are looking for recommendations for, like, the little fantasy good hood books, I recommend, like... Fly Girl by Omar Tyree. That's one of my favorite books. The True to the Game. Be More Quick Careful. Um, I'll leave like links or pictures of those books. But Omar Tyree, Fly Girl is like one of my... I don't know if I have a favorite book now. But that was one of my favorite books growing up. I do like the hood mood books. But it's like now that I'm getting older. It's like time to read something else. Time to broaden my horizons and learn and grow. So, um, this is the, um, Laws of Human Nature. I also read his 48 Laws of Power, guys. I got that book in the corner. It's tore to pieces. It's tore to shreds. Um, these books by Robert Greene is kind of long. So, if you guys, like, Russian, I wouldn't suggest these books. I, I've, I didn't have to read over, like, chapters and stuff like that just to get what he was trying to say. So, um, yeah, this is the, um... Laws of Human Nature, I would definitely recommend it to a friend. It's kind of thick. It's about like 600 pages. It's probably like 580 in like actual like reading. The rest is like acknowledgments and like credits and bibliographies. So, um, yes, this is The Laws of Human Nature by Robert Greene. He got a couple books, The Art of Seduction, which I'll probably not be reading next, but will be reading soon. He got a 50 Laws with 50 Cent. I got to read that because 50 Cent is like one of my role models. Y'all would have to look into him to understand, but I love me some 50 Cent. Um, and he got, what, The Laws of War. He got a couple little books or whatever, but um, this is The Laws of Human Nature. And I'm just, I, I would love to sit here and like read like notes, but I feel like if I read them, it's going to drag out or whatever. So I'm just gonna read like the basically what his, basically what his chapter is about. Um, basically like I mean I read the chat read the titles like each chapter basically. Y'all gonna get what I'm saying basically. All right, so his first chapter is about it's called Master Your Emotional Self. The law of irrational irrationality is basically telling you guys to be rational. Um, think. Think, think about something before you be quick to be quick to think before you act. Be quick to basically calm down. Don't just act on impulse. Basically, like don't just act on emotion. Um, just chill before you get up and just go crazy. Like master your emotions. Get them in check before you just up and just make a move. Beaks, 
increase your reaction time, basically. Be, be less quick to react, basically. Um, number two is going to be transform self-love into empathy, law of narcissism, which is basically saying that um, you should have more empathy to people, be self-understanding. They're basically saying, like, we judge people. Like, when we do something, is oh, I did this because this. But when somebody else do it, it's just like, mm, they just they just fucked up. Like, basically, it's, it's basically saying, like, we give ourselves an excuse. Like, it's situational for us, but when it's other people, it's a flaw. Like, basically, like, when we do something, it's because of this, this, and the third. But when somebody else do something, it's just, like, just written off. They just something wrong with them. They just crazy. They just this. But when we do it, it's just like, oh, it's because of that. It's because of that. It's basically saying have more empathy for people. Put yourself in their shoes. Don't be quick to judge. Don't be, be a little bit more understanding. Give them the same leeway that you would give yourself. Um, the next thing is going to be is, is chapter three, which is called See Through People's Mask Law of Role Playing, which is basically saying pay attention to peop the tone of people's voice. Pay attention to the face that they make as opposed to the words they say it. Um, we, we say we gullible. We often think that we can get something for nothing. Um, and, and, and get an example of how people like say you're mad at something. You fit, you pound your fist. Like sometimes you'll pound your fist. Like somebody say something about somebody did like something to piss you off. But right away you don't sting your hand on the fist. You do it like either too little or too soon basically trying to overemphasize that you mad about something but it's just like or you try to come off as tough and it's just like bro like that wasn't the right time to fist play you should have did that five minutes ago or like you in the audience and then you feel like you got to act a certain way but it's just like you wasn't that mad at first so it's just like just pay attention to what people show you and give you as opposed to how they really feel just pay attention to them um and get to know them about their childhood because when you know they about their childhood it determines a lot about like where they coming from and why they are the way they are um the next one chapter four is determined strength in people's character law of compulsive behavior um basically it's understanding your own character um basically learning your strength and your weaknesses so that basically it's like we all got flaws but it's like when you learn what is your flaws you can change the game for yourself um no it's like when you know you make mistakes or you're there to correct your mistakes you are not trapped in making the same mistakes um you are not kept above your character now you know what gets to you what pisses you off with this and that there so it's like you can kind of channel it and get it in check before you actually act so it's like know your character know people's character even other people know their character so you know what triggers them or whatever it's like everything don't have to be negative it's just like if you know your friend don't like this and that same especially with friends like if you know that your friend doesn't like something don't do it like you start getting to know how people what people ticks and they'll avoid less problems when you start really understand their flaws and that's why getting to know people is very important because we all date people or get involved with people and we don't really get to know them and then we're constantly arguing with them or going through stuff about them because we haven't had that discussion or we haven't sat around long enough to really get to know them we we'll tick them off we just automatically sleep with them and shit and then we think we're in love with them when we don't even really know their personality so it's just like if you start getting to know people's personality and it's not of your character or like how you like you can avoid the whole drama of going through being in a relationship with them for months or friendship with them for months and months knowing damn well excuse me guys that their personality does not mesh well with yours so yes the next one Become an elusive. This is number five. Become an elusive object of desire. It's basically saying don't no one to be seen, no one not to be seen. Too much absence, too much presence is annoying. You know, it's like you. you it's good to seem nor. It's good, good to see human. It's good to seem like you normal, like everybody else. But too much of it is gonna make you boring. So like, no one to disappear. And I actually have a video coming up about that. About um 
basically it's gonna be a video about disappearing especially at the strip club and finding multiple clubs to go to because it's like you're missed more and your desire more where you're not always seen so i do have a video coming up about that um basically don't talk too much don't over talk too much don't um don't don't do too much like just just chill like um don't don't overdo it um I don't know why I feel like it's pieces missing in my um, um, notes. I don't know. Anyway, number six um, is going to be elevate your perspective. Law of shortcomings. Uh, basically, it's basically saying we live in the moment. Um, we don't deal with the consequences. It's we don't want to deal with the con like basically. Avoiding, avoid entangling ourselves with those who can't see the consequences of their action. Don't lose sight of your long-term goals. Like, basically, don't get caught up with the moment and trade that in for your long-term goals because we do stuff without thinking sometimes and we sacrifice what we want in the future for something that we were supposed to be doing. Like, for, and I'll use this, for example, the other day. My friend had asked her friend to come outside and she was like, oh, like she was outside for a little bit. She was hanging outside and then she was like, oh, um, you know, I got to go in the house because I got some homework I need to do. And the girl like, no, like trying to like basically tell her like, no, just come out with us. Just come out with us. And she like, no, like I got to get back and do this. And it's just like, so she, she, she was like, I was, I'm already out of half past, you know, out, half an hour past what I was going to do. I'm, I'm going to go in the house and, and, and handle what I got to handle, and then I'll come back outside. That takes a very strong person to be able to be like, nope, I was already out. It's time for me to go. Most people live in the moment. They're like, well, I could do that later. I could do that tomorrow. But no, like, handle your shit first. Um, number seven is going to be soften people's resistance by conforming to their self-opinion. Law of defensiveness. Basically, what it's saying is, is basically, like, agree with people. Uh, basically, it's like you avoid less problems when you just kind of, like, shake your head or let people get some level of importance. Like, don't just be quick to just go be defensive against them. Asking them questions or asking for advice makes people feel like they're important or they're superior. It's not to tell, it's not to say that, to treat people like they're better than you. It's basically just to say, like, you can avoid a lot of drama when you kind of like stoop down a little bit and give people more importance because there was no, it's, it kind of like, it, it kind of like loosens up their jealousy or how they feel about you, da 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 da. So basically, it's just like make somebody feel more relevant than they are, basically. Um, change your circumstances um, by changing your attitude. Number eight, law of self sabotage, which is basically saying like, Half the reason why the shit don't go the way y'all want to in life is because y'all attitude, um, y'all negative, and y'all just not positive. And it's basically saying that once you fix your attitude, you fix your problems. Um, I don't think that chapter need a whole explanation. Um, nine is confront your dark side. Law of oppression is basically saying that everybody got a dark side to them. Um, um, everybody got dark side to um, and um, basically it's saying, uh, sometimes you gotta offend people, um, and hurt people's feelings who block your path. Um, you have to release demons. You gotta get in check with your demons, basically. You know, to get um, to, to um, oh wait, release your demons so you can you can, you can fix your shit. You know what I mean? Get in touch with your shit. Um, basically, just, you know, just... Basically, it's basically saying that we all have a side that could be kind of aggressive. And it's basically saying don't shy away from that side. Or don't think that that side is bad. Because sometimes you got to use that demon side to put your foot down, basically. In other words. Um, number 10 is beware of frag fragile ego law of envy. Um, it's basically saying, watch out for people that's jealous of you. Um, 
most of the time jealousy comes from your friends more than anything um we we be thinking that later on is a problem that created that jealousy when we don't realize basically that that person been jealous of you from the beginning and basically people who are jealous of you find a way to get closer to you basically it's not that jealousy is created basically like it was already there from the beginning and we just didn't pay attention to it it's not like after a while they're already jealous of you they've been jealous of you so just basically be mindful of that or whatever and um number 11 know your limits the the law of grandiosity i hope i'm saying that right grandiosity g-r-a-n-d-i-o-s-i-t-y grandiosity um is basically saying that um we we be in denial or not it's in our it's in our it's our worst enemy we um basically elevate our own self-opinion of ourselves we think we more than what we really is not to say that we the sh we not the shit or nothing like that because you the shit but it's basically saying like sometimes we over like we human just like the next person is and it's like we give ourselves just a little bit too much credit not to say we give ourselves too much credit as a to our talent but just as humans like we regular people just like everybody else is basically humble yourself um number 12 is basically saying reconnect to the masculine or feminine within you law of ginger rigid rigidity now i'm gonna speak to my females and this is coming from experience it's basically saying it's okay to have feminine and masculine traits basically but channel them like if you're a man, don't be afraid to show that you have feminine qualities because let's just say you're a fashion designer. The fact that you are man, but you know what women like, use that to your advantage. Like, get your dollar. Like, don't let nobody talk you out of, oh, you're supposed to be a man. Same thing with females. Like, we, but also it's going to be reversed. Like, I'm going to say this about females. Like, have a masculine side when it's appropriate. Appropriation. And basically what I mean by that is like us females, we could come off very aggressive. And it's not it's not our fault. It's just what we've been through. We, we got to protect ourselves. We got to protect our kids. We got to hold our shit down. But basically it's the saying that goes, you, what is it? You, you attract more with sugar than you do with salt. Something to that nature. Basically it's like, just because we have aggressive, me aggressive side doesn't mean we always gotta put that out there. Like, you can, you can, you can, you'll get your way when you're nicer than when you just always mean or gotta be aggressive. Like, yes, guys, girls, don't let your masculine role just drop down and forget about it because we gotta let people know. Like I said earlier, you gotta put your foot down with certain situations. But it's basically like no winning where to channel that shit because some of us females, we do become aggressive and some of us are not in touch with our feminine nature. And it's not your fault, ladies. We've been through a lot of shit. But just know when to channel it. But don't completely get rid of it. Just more so know when to use it. So it's basically to say, guys and girls, use your feminine and masculine energy for y'all in the times that y'all need to use especially when it comes to like your creativity and shit like that um don't let nobody talk this is a man thing this is a girl thing like no all right the next thing is number 14 reset the downward pull of the group law of conformity this is basically saying to say that you we don't realize it but the way we carry ourselves and the way we our thought process, it usually can change when we're in a group of people. When we're in a group of people, like, for instance, say you like something, but then your group of friends don't like it. Say you like anime or books, but then when your group or white music or I hate the, I hate calling it white music, pop, rock, you know, rock, rock and roll, whatever. And it's like when we get around our friends, it's like we don't like to admit that we like that kind of stuff because our group of friends don't like that kind of stuff. It's basically saying be aware of that. But it's also saying that shift, if you're like in a management position, shift the atmosphere. Um, 
try to remind, get your group on board, remind them of why they doing this. What's the goal? Um, if you're a boss, be firm when you need to be firm, but still humanize yourself. Let your when you, when y'all having meetings, let y'all let y'all group speak up about what they feel about this. Let people feel about that. Like give everybody a voice, basically. When you let motherfuckers speak up and talk, it makes everybody feel like comfortable that they they got they can they can um. It makes everybody feel comfortable that they got a voice and that they okay to just speak their mind. If the group is bad, don't just come in there and be like like I said more so as a manager. Oh, this restaurant is bad. It's just bad. Like, oh, well, this this team, I can't do nothing with them. Like, as a manager, as a supervisor, it's your job to shift that and turn the negative into positive, basically, um, and make people feel part of a whole. It would, it would, people are more positive when you include them than when you make them just feel like, I'm the boss. You got to do it. Like, shift that energy. You can shift that energy by how you treat your employees or your group if you're the leader. Da, 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 da. The next one is 15. Make them want to follow you. Law of fickleness. Um, it's basically saying back to the appear, disappear. Um, don't talk too much. When you make a mistake, apologize for it. But don't just keep apologizing for it. Show that you're sorry because it's just like if you over apologize, you just seem weak. Like you just apologizing. Show that you apologize. Show that you are serious. Uh, don't be defensive. Don't be whiny if you attack, you know. Um, don't make promises to people that you can't. Don't overpromise people. Work every day on improving your skills. Um, it's basically saying um, a lot of us, we don't follow our dreams. And we don't, we don't um, spend a daily time on working on stuff that make us happy. And that's usually what causes depression. And um, most of the depressions is just coming from not listening to your inner self. Um, be alert. Explore creativity. Um, you know, be, put detail in. It's like basically when you're going to do something, do it to the best of you. Detail your work. Don't do it sloppy. It's like don't do just shit that's a get by if you want to be a leader, like basically. Um, number 16, see the hostility behind the frilly friendly facade law of aggressive watch out for people that's um that need to be in control of everything in the environment um tame your aggressive energy uh, for productivity um basically use your aggression use your aggression and put it in your work like you can be angry but Put, don't be angry in actions. Be angry in your work, basically. Um, just, like, you know, just put your passion and your pain and your music and your art. Save it for another time. Like, don't just be angry. Um, let me read this for y'all. People engage in some catastrophic release of their anger. Some giant, and then it goes away, and they slip back into complacency or become bitter. Cool down your anger, bringing it to a simmer rather than a boil. Your control anger will help you give the res resolve and patience you will need for what might be larger struggle, what might be a larger struggle than what you imagine. Let the unfairness or injustice and the line in the back of your mind and keep and keep you energized. The real satisfaction comes from not in one spasm of emotions, but in actually defeating the bully and exposing their narrow mind for who they are. Um, like I said, an expressive word, let an expressive word capture and channel anger, letting it breathe into work of sense of life and moment. And giving expression to anger, you will always find an audience. So basically, put that shit into your money. Put that shit into your bag. Put that shit into a podcast. You know what I mean? Don't anger. It's not. It's an emotion, and nine times out of ten, you'll still be angry. But then you know later on, you'll be like, "Damn, why I do that?" So the best place to put that shit is in your work. You ain't gonna never feel bad for putting that shit in your work. And 
People like drama. People like anger. People like hurt. People like pain that attract people. Get you capitalize on that shit. Don't just be mad at people and then you fuck up your capitalization of emotion. Put that shit into your work. Um, <laughs> period. Number 17 is seize the historical moment. Then law of generational myopic. It's basically saying that this is for my millennials and baby boomers and Generation X and Generation Z. Y'all get on the internet and y'all see everybody. My generation was better. This generation was better. You, We're all going to think our generation is better because that's the generation we grew up in. That's the generation we was born in. That generation molded us. You know what I mean? I am a 90s baby. I am a millennial. So, of course, I feel like 90s was the best times. You know, you, you, we be stuck into thinking our time was the best time, which it was, millennials, team millennial. But anyway, it's basically saying that it's nothing wrong with you loving your generation or your era, but it's also saying you have to out with the old and in with the new, basically. Like, things change, shit happens, and it's like, if you want to stay stuck in your, your era, go ahead. But you're going to be lost in the world trying to stay stuck. That shit is going. It's not coming back. And it's basically saying, like, you can capitalize on it. Like, for instance, like, let's say you want to come. If you want to make a fashion show and you want to dedicate it to the 90s. Fine. But, like, still modernize it. It's still not the 90s no more. So, it's basically saying, like, appreciate your stuff. If you want to, like, every once in a while bring it back and give people the nostalgic feelings and all that. Fine. But it's a project and keep it pushing. Don't get stuck not knowing what's going on in the world and not knowing. Because times is changing whether you like it or not. And we have to be in touch with what's going on in the new world. You can't connect like that. You can't relate to the younger crowd. A, a lot of older people, the reason why I can't get y'all point to across to these younger people is because y'all want to talk about how shit used to be and how things used to be and how this used to be. Like, that's fine. But find out, basically, the slang of new today. If y'all want to get these kids to listen to y'all, if y'all want to get this generation to listen to y'all, get y'all message across about how the time used to be. But find some slang words of the kids today. Find out what they like today. Find out what kind of platforms they getting on today and get your message across on those platforms. Like, for instance, I got Facebook. You know, Facebook is good for older people. And Facebook and, you know, Instagram is good. But TikTok is the new wave, guys. You know, a lot of us older people are like, I don't want to in that social media. Da, 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 da. Like, you don't got to get on there for no drama, nothing like that. But put your shit on there. And this is a lesson for me. Like, I'm trying to, I don't, I don't fuck with TikTok like that. But I'm trying to get into TikTok more because that's what the kids like. And if y'all want to be seen and y'all trying to get this message across, it's basically, like I said, out with the old and with the new. Still have your principles and your morals about yourself. But don't be a walking millennial. Like, our time is, 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 is past. You know what I mean? You can stay true to who you are, but know how to keep up with what's going on in today's time. But period, bottom line. Um, number 18. Meditate on our common morality, the law of death. This is basically saying to say that a lot of people are afraid of death. Y'all don't want to talk about it. Y'all avoid it. And it's basically saying if you're more in accepting of death, it will make you basically appreciate the time of the essence. Like we all like to think, I got time, I got time, I can do this, I got plenty of years. But any of us could be going today or tomorrow. And it's basically saying when you basically get in touch with the fact that death it will be arising soon, it makes you wanna it makes you go harder because you know that you're not promised tomorrow, basically. So instead of just avoiding death. Or being afraid to die and knowledge that is part of life, basically. Um, basically. So, yes, it was 18 chapters in the law of human nature. Um, I only summarized some of it, guys. My video was kind of long. I mean, I'm talking about a book, so it's going to be kind of long. Um, I would suggest to go read the book, guys. It's a really good book, and it will help you understand. It will help you be more sensitive to yourself and to other people. But it will also make you be harder to yourself. It's like everybody looking for a favor. Everybody looking for you to feel bad for them. And it's like, you can feel bad for them. You can, you, it, but don't feel bad for yourself. Like, acknowledge your flaws. Give yourself a break. But 
basically control your shit. Like, when you start recognizing your flaw more, you start rec you see other people's flaws, and you just start seeing how as na our human nature, you sit back and just watch how motherfuckers carry yourself. It will give you a chance to kind of get on yourself like, oh, I don't want to be like that. Oh, this person always getting in the drama or shit. Maybe I'm always getting in the drama. Maybe I need to fall back. Maybe I need to do this. Maybe I need to do that. So, um, it just gives you a chance to just tell you the tools that you need to kind of just sit back and observe other people and yourself. And when you observe other people and you get kind of like a mm, taste from them and make you reflect on some of your shit. So, um, I would definitely recommend the book, guys. Get y'all the, the, the Laws of Human Nature. It's a good read. And uh, I think I I prefer to read than to listen to audio shit. But they, I think they have the Laws of Human Nature as well as the Art of Seduction on YouTube where you can listen to it. But me personally, I prefer to read. That's just my thing. If you want to say hi to YouTube, come say hi to YouTube. My daughter is here. Say hi, YouTube. Hello. Um, this is my daughter. I know I haven't shown y'all her in a while. My baby's 11 now. Um, last time I put her in my video, she was kind of teeny. Um, I know y'all really couldn't see her like that. But anyway, get this book, guys. Thank you guys for supporting me. Thank you guys for watching my channel. Um, this, like I said, this is all about growth and getting in touch with yourself and building yourself up. That's what my channel was about. And um, I just want to continue to see y'all grow and glow. And um, thank you guys for watching my channel. It's already a long-ass video. Probably one of my longest videos. I will probably not do no edits because this shit takes forever. But I will see y'all guys in another video. Mwah.